Hi, welcome to Heart of My Sleeve with Christine. Today's vlog is going to be on the topic of defining moments. And before I begin, I'd like you to take one quick second to make sure that you are subscribed to my channel, that you hit the bell notification so you're notified of my new vlogs, that you hit the like button, and feel free to leave comments, suggestions, questions, topics you want me to cover in the comments below. I promise I'll respond. Now, without further ado, here is today's vlog. Hi family, Christine here. It's been a while since we chatted, about a month actually. Um, the reason I have not been able to vlog in the last month is kind of also the reason that I'm doing this vlog on the topic today of defining moments. About a month ago, my daughter and I were involved in a car accident and I suffered both a traumatic brain injury and whiplash, which is gonna take me some time to recover from. The beginning of my recovery was a substantial period of time in brain rest, which if any of you have had to endure that, it is so hard. Um, no technology, no reading, uh, dark, quiet rooms, it is super hard, it's super lonely, super frustrating, and you basically spend this time alone with your thoughts. And I spent that time wisely, I think. Um, I did a lot of soul searching and meditating and praying, and what I discovered were several little epiphanies that I wanna share with you here today. First, I want to explain to you how I define the concept of defining moment. I've had several of them in my life, and defining moments for me are points in time where you either have an epiphany or you make a decision that alters the course of your life. I've had a few in the last couple of weeks, and I want to share them with you because I think they're pretty big. The first defining moment is this. While I live with depression and anxiety, and it's always going to be a part of me, they are not me. They don't define me. They reside within me, and I need to take the time to honor that, just as I need the time I've spent to heal from this depression, I need time for my brain to reset and heal from my brain injury. This was a huge light bulb moment for me. Last week in my therapy session, we had a rather large breakthrough. And that breakthrough is that I don't get angry. I'm not saying I never get upset, but I never really learned how to be angry. I grew up in a house where there was a lot of anger and that anger was ugly and mean. I mean, talking about name calling and putting people down and hostility. And I think because of that, I've never really learned how to process anger. So what happens for me is when I'm upset, I withdraw. So when I'm upset, I stop talking, I retreat and disappear. And when I'm alone with that, I cry. And that's kind of my outlet. But I have a hard time confronting people. And when I'm able to really confront people, it really is more of a sign that I'm just done with their BS. And it doesn't bother me anymore. So I don't get mad about it. I just matter of factly tell people what I'm thinking and I'm done. Even when I was faced with the end of my marriage to my first husband, I wasn't mad when I left. Even though any other woman would have been, I just left. I was like, done, I'm walking away. And my ex-husband actually for a long time was one of the people that I could call on his BS without any hostility. I'd just call him out on it and then kind of laugh it off and be done with it. 
And there's one other person that I'm able to do that with that's in my family. But when I'm in a situation where somebody sh does something crappy, shitty to me, I, I tend to not say it unless I am really not in a position where I care about our relationship much anymore. Um, and that's past the point of anger. So my therapist wants me to start acknowledging and honoring my anger. And I don't know how I feel about that. I don't, I think it's a slippery slope for me and hmm, I'm just not sure. But it was a, it was a eye-opening moment for me. The reason I am prone to depression is because I quell those feelings and I just internalize them and then they build up with all the other little things that really somebody be able to tell you to knock it off or whatever and I just keep them all in and then they bubble up and blow but I'm not mad I'm just done and I walk away so interested in your thoughts on healthy ways to practice anger healthy and safe because um, I don't want to go down that slippery slope hmm, interested let me know what you think so the other big epiphany that I had was regarding changing relationships and the struggle that I'm having with that. Because the relationships that I'm struggling with changing are relationships that defined my identity for my almost my entire life. And those relationships are with my kids. When you're a new mom, everybody warns you jokingly sometimes, sometimes not, about how much your life is going to change. And you have a very clear understanding of, see my kitty? <laughs> very clear understanding of the fact that your life is going to drastically change from the day before you have the baby to the day you have the baby. You know that you are going to go through <clears throat> adjustments in your sleep, in your time with your partner, in how you eat, where you go, um, where you live, like all of those things are things that are gonna adjust. And you base almost every single decision that you have when you're a parent of kids that are younger around what's best for the kids. And I did that. I actually did that when I was 17. Super young mom. Had my older two when I was 17 and 19. And that being said, I didn't have time between um, school and having children to really figure out things for me. Because I had my daughter the third week of my senior year of high school. So, I don't know what life looks like outside of being a mom. I never have. And all of a sudden, my kids don't need me anymore. They always need their mom. You know, I'm going to get phone calls of, Mom, how do you make the streusel for your apple pie? Like, those kinds of questions I'm going to get. But my kids aren't dependent on me for making decisions that are going to impact them because they're outliving their adult lives. It's always the end goal when you have a child to raise a respectable, responsible, productive member of society. And I did that. My older girls are going to be 25, oh my gosh, and 27 this year. and. My youngest is 16, so she's at that point now where she's off doing her own thing. She'll be driving soon, she has two jobs, she's doing great in school, she's got a 4.2 GPA, she's musically talented, she's got awesome friends. She's also at a point where she really doesn't need me. But 
my identity is wrapped up in being a mom. I don't know what post-kid's life is supposed to look like because I really didn't have a pre-kid's life. And that is huge. Because we were young parents, we are also going to be early ep empty nesters. Chad and I will be 45 and 44, gosh, when our youngest graduates from high school. So we're still going to have a good chunk of our lives that's just the two of us. So what I need to do, I think, to get through this is to figure out what we want our post-kids life to look like. Where do we want to live? What do we want to do in our free time? What kind of hobbies do we want to take in? All of those things we need to figure out. So Chad and I talked the other day and what we're going to do is, this might sound silly, we're going to create a dream board of things that we want to do post kids. And we're going to take that dream board and create a couple more lists from that. One is we're going to take those things we put in our dream board and we're going to start prioritizing them. What's attainable now? What is going to take some time? What do we have to save for? And take those priority lists and then put timelines on them and then from there start action plans to put those things into play. Sounds kind of silly, I realize that, but because I've never had that opportunity before I think that is probably a good place to start. And Chad agrees. So we're gonna get started on our dream board and see what happens from there. A little bit of action. That should feel good. I hope this was insightful for you and I hope that you leave me comments below, ideas you might have for post kids life, or maybe share some experiences that you've gone through that are similar to that. If you have any ways that you think I can maybe look to for coping, that'd be helpful. But it's going to be a rough road for me for a while. But I appreciate the fact that you're hanging in there with me. And I hope to be able to upload more regularly going in here into the future. And if you have any questions or thoughts or comments on topics that, you, that I could cover, I'd also appreciate that feedback. I look forward to hearing from all of you. Hope you have a great day. Thanks.